Hey everybody, this is Mark from King's Landing Sport Fishing and today I'm actually, uh, I'm off site, I'm at Wright Tech Marine with Ryan here from Wright Tech and uh, I've got a, got a P66 uh, transducer here that's going on my Garmin setup and Ryan makes a great mount so what we're going to do today is we're actually going to show you the mount and Ryan's going to walk you through actually how to assemble this mount. Yep, so do the install and all that stuff and with that, that's in the box. I'll yeah. pass you the box and let's sure. take it out and let's show folks what you get. Alright, so basically Comes just boxed up there, and I just always send some decal and whatnot with it. And I'll set that off to the side. Um, so basically, it's just uh, stainless steel replacement uh, mounts for the actual transducer. So it's gonna get away from actually having the uh, factory shims that you can get that they can, all depends on your hull angle, they can actually, when you tighten them down, they can pop up, and they're just a pain in the butt to. Uh, actually have with the shims so and with a factory with a factory mount too like you it's either you've got this angle with no shim all or nothing. an angle exactly. with a shim and that's it's it so it's hard nothing else or geisel wedge in plastic shims yeah. and all that stuff to make up the difference this basically infinite angle adjustment plus totally bulletproof you're not dealing with the factory plastic mount that uh, for as much as these guys are in the more expensive tm 165 that's a lot more expensive uh it's all just plastic so they can actually uh the guys that are running like really high speeds, rangers and things like that, they can pop up and blow up out of the way. And uh, I've heard a couple of the other ones actually like almost grenading. So this totally solves that problem. So we'll run over it. A um, couple things you're going to need. You're going to need a cordless drill with a 3 8 drill bit. And I actually forgot a eighth inch drill bit that we need. 3 16 sorry. I need a 3 16 to drill one other hole. I'll quick get that here in a second and a uh, Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws that are in the actual factory mount. Um, pair of side cutters, I like these. They're kind of uh, almost like a toenail clipper type thing, I yes. guess you would want to call it. Or side cutters, and that's just, there's a little plastic nibs on the bracket that you want to remove. Um, eighth inch Allen key, uh, a pair of 9 16 wrenches, a 3 8 wrench, and just a flat screwdriver pry bar if you have to take this apart at the plastic can get kind of interlocked in there and then with the stainless steel hardware with the bolts i always like to put a little bit of lubricant on when i'm actually fastening them up so you don't gall the threads of the stainless stainless will actually almost want to weld itself together if you're ratcheting and doing things too fast so always a good idea even water um, will actually work for that uh, lubricant there um, so that's basically it Let's take this apart. If you want to undo that. Yep, I'll undo Mark. that while you can get that drill bit. Awesome, yeah. perfect. So pretty simple. We want to take the uh, we want to take the transducer apart just to do the uh, do the installation of the mount, and then we'll put it all back together afterwards. So just two uh, two Phillips screws. I'm going to remove at the front here, and what this is going to do, it's actually going to take the paddle wheel off on this particular model. Um, if you've got a version without the paddle wheel or you know a TM uh, 165 without the paddle wheel yeah, you're, stu you're still going to do the same Ryan's actually bringing one over right now but as you can see it just uh, it just pops off All right, so there's the paddle wheel off there's my two screws and uh, and this is now uh, being separated so yeah without the uh, paddle wheel it's just a flat piece that the uh, TM 165 and I've seen P66 yep. also without Absolutely those, do. So, um, so I just grabbed the 316 scroll bit and uh, so now we've got the transducer yep. ready for Ryan to start the uh, modifications and the install. <laughs> so first thing we're doing, we're going to chuck that uh, 3 16 bit because uh, that's the first one we're going to use. So with the factory mount, you just got to kind of pull it apart. And this is why I had the little uh, pry bar here just because there's little tabs on there that you want to uh, pull out. Sounds like it's breaking, but it's not. It's just falling apart. So basically, as you can see here, yeah. it's basically pulled off that top piece. Yeah, everything is just all plastic and uh, everything there. Now, I do want to say they the P sixty six as we just found out um, is still the original version. There is the TM one sixty fives, the latest ones, and possibly the newest uh, one six P sixty six is also. They've moved the cable back, so I have made a revised bracket that works with the new style and the old style. So all the mounts are going to get off me when you buy one from now. This is April 8th um, and forward um, are going to be the revised mount that work with both. Yeah. 
Um, sometimes the ones in the past, the old bracket wouldn't work with the new style just because they moved the cable. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is take the uh, side cutters and all you do is basically you're trying to get just, it's like a little nib on the end, it's like a T. So you want to cut that actual T part off and still leave most of the uh, stub on there. And what I like to do is just go around and press first before you cut it. Just like that. What well, you can see, it's hard to see, but the little, the little piece right here just popped yeah, right it's off. just the little end there that uh, pops off. And that's because essentially what it does, those, it's, those nibs act as guidance holes afterwards. Exactly, the right it slides bracket. into the actual mount itself. Yeah. And cutting them off, it doesn't affect anything there. And it just adds some strength to the actual rest of uh, the mount when it's all done. So that's that part. We're gonna take this apart here. Assemble the actual mount. So the one thing you get is a drilling jig. This piece, after it's all done, is basically scrap. If you look on it in the etching, it says what it's actually for in drilling jig. This is just mild steel. Once you're done, just throw it away. You don't need it anymore. So you're gonna take it apart and there's a little tiny machine screw and uh, the nut and the washer there, you're gonna keep that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the drilling jig and we're gonna slide the drilling jig inside the mount and if we look here it might be hard to see on the video there's a little raised spot here that actually slides into this little line that's kind of a locating mark for it and you just put it in until it's at that point it can only go so far and then this one here you're just going to hold on to it put your thumb put some pressure on it take your uh, 3 16th drill bit and Just slowly drill through. Plastic goes through nice and easy, sharp drill bit. Don't go too, too quick or it'll actually want to pull and grab right through. So all we did was make a hole. Set the drilling jig off to the side for a minute. Get our little machine screw on that one. Now we can actually get the jig back. And before we do that, we've got to take the cover you snap the factory cover back on into place. So it snaps back down, make sure it locks in. That locking that you heard when I took it apart that almost sounded like it was breaking, that's just a little tab. So now it's all kind of back into place. You take the drilling jig and you kind of got to pinch it down. Slide it up over. Oops, I'm gonna make sure you're inside it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna see the hole that you just drilled lines right back up. So then you're gonna take your uh, little machine screw, put that through. And in this case, for drilling, I like to go from the top down. It's easier to work with. When we install it after, I'll take the, uh, the round button head part of the uh, machine screw and come up. But for this, it's a whole lot easier to uh, just tighten this up when it's uh, on the bottom side. This is the only tight, finicky part. It's where you need small fingers. Much, yeah. much easier. I have big fingers and two that have no feelings. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And maybe while Ryan's doing that, just I'll come up and show yeah. you guys yeah. on the video. You can, see, you can see this drilling jig here now. Um, there you go. You can see the screw. You can see the little groove where it fits in. And what it's going to do is you can actually see we're about to drill some holes. And this lines up those holes so they're in the perfect, uh, perfect spot. Exactly. There you go. Perfect. So then you just want to make sure that it's all tight and square down on the bottom of the mouth, that it's pushed down. And uh, it's in line, it's centered up, and it's where it needs to be. So then you put your 3-8 uh, drill bit back in the drill. and turn your speed down to low. And then what you want to do is take the actual mount and I like to put my finger over top of the cable so the cable stays well away from uh, the drill bit when it's going in. And you just want to make sure it's square. Yeah, it's kind of square. Now, the thing is that 
I've noticed that since I made this, there must be at least two or three different injection molds that there's slight differences here. It really doesn't make any difference. The hole is gonna be maybe not in the same spot every time when you go to put it on, but all you do is chase out the yep. hole and it's good. And, and, one, and once you put this bracket on, you've got all the adjustments in the world, so. So with the plastic, like I said, good sharp drill bit and just nice, slow and easy with pressure. And uh, just watch so you don't have your hand in underneath it because you can actually grab and want to pull down. It's not like you're machining wood or something. It's, the plastic wants to grip and... There we go. So now it's actually drilled. And now we're done with that bracket, right? The, bracket, the drilling jig is done. done. Yeah, the drilling jig is all done. We can take this guy back off of there. And that was all just to locate where the hole is to go. Slides back off. That's basically can be put away or you want to keep it or chuck it. It's totally up to you. We'll take this outer piece back off. This guy gets snapped in here so tight sometimes. That, uh... There we go. It's a little locking cap on the. I just wish they wouldn't use plastic for their tra <laughs> for transducer for mounts. As much as worth, yes. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you. And the speeds that they're running through yeah. in the back of the boat yeah. and, the, and the sheer force. Exactly. So then, basically, you take the inner stainless steel U-shaped mount and you put that in and it'll only go in one direction. And now you can see there's two holes in here. There's the bottom 3 8 hole and the top smaller hole. The top smaller hole is what actually goes into the area where those nibs were that uh, we cut off. That kind of locates it and keeps it all yep. centered and square. And uh, basically you put it down on the mount and then what you're going to want to do, all you do is pry the edges outwards. That piece between the drilling jig and that piece, it makes sure that you don't screw up. Your exactly. holes will always be, use a drilling jig and that, your holes will be in the right so place. So if you want to take that up, you can yeah. do a close so as up. You, as that you can see now, it snapped right into place on this transducer. So, there you go. And actually looking through the hole there is it's bang perfect. on. Yep. It's, I'm kind of wondering if uh, the jig was made for the first bunch of, because this is the old style that the actual, uh, Injection mold was the same as what the original uh, 165 was that's that probably uh, originally started with. So then you're going to take your three six, uh, the little machine screw again, put the washer on the bottom side so it's touching the plastic, put it through, and you're going to bolt this guy down. And this is why this is easy to do this way now. Before when it was in the drilling jig, you couldn't really get at it with a wrench to uh, tighten it up if you wanted to. Now it's totally in the open and nice and easy. And what size is the wrench there? The wrench is a 3 8 and a uh, 1 8 Allen key. Perfect. So the two sizes there. And basically you just tighten it up and that's all that's exposed yep. on the bottom there. So, and you don't need the washer on the top because it's against the stainless. Everything's yep. all lined up perfectly there. So set that away, that's it. Then we take the pinch tube. That basically goes between the two pieces of stainless and this is what allows my mounts to be tightened up and still be able to be adjusted if you want to uh, move them because uh, it basically allows you to set the torque of the actual mount. And that's, and that's really advantageous. So if, you're, uh, if you've got a boat where and, you know, suddenly you're in some rougher water or you're trolling at a bit more of a speed or there's a lot of current, and for those of you like me that are salmon trollers, sometimes you might lose your cannonballs. And that's yeah. where you can just take you can take If you have, hand, access, you have access, yeah, and like pivot, and pivot it. Exactly. I've got a little lun. I can reach down the back and adjust this thing if I wanted to on the fly. And uh, basically set the torque of it that it doesn't move while you're on plane. But once you actually, uh, if you want to adjust it, you can reach down, pull it up. Or if you were to hit something, yeah. it's a floating degree, debris, it'll, it'll pop up and you can just reach down and put it back into place. So it's yeah. kind of cool that way. So put the pinch tube in. And then uh, what I like to do is before you get the rest of them out together, I just take that 3 8 bolt and slide in through. Just to make sure that the uh, 
holes are all make okay. sure everything lines up. This one here, I am going to just because when we bolted it down, I'm going to put the drill through again, just to uh, slowly just go straight through. Just put a yep. little bit of plastic, and that's 100% uh, okay. That doesn't uh, do anything there to anything. So put it back in. And to Ryan's point about that adjustability, if you're like me with a swim pl platform, it probably involves getting wet at, when my boat's at the dock or putting on the trailer to adjust, but exactly. still nice to be able to have that adjustment, unlike the factory uh, air bar mount, which is uh, set it uh, and you're done. Yeah. Now I'm this off. Not every, not every boat is the same. Uh, I think we're seeing more and more different angle tra uh, transoms For now, sure. yeah. and that's where this mount really comes into play. Yeah. Yeah, when you get a transom that has a real um, funny angle on it, I've seen aluminum transoms that are on real angles, like yep. either way, inward or outward, and it just makes mounting transducers so tough. So then we take the plastic cover, snap it back on. This is the last time we have to do this. Again, just snaps down over and make sure the plastic locks back into place. Hear that snap. And we're going to take the grommet off the actual mount. Get this one there too. I yeah, I'll well, get that one. It, it kind of wants to move around until you uh, get it kind of where you need it. Slide this guy over just like so. And you're going to take a 3 8 bolt with one washer on it and put it in. Once you get it started, it's easy. It's just that yeah, first it's little the bit. first little bit to get both sides, especially on this because with my other mounts that are all stainless, you don't have to worry. Uh, these just because of the plastic yep. in between and all that stuff, it kind of wants to. And the thing is, you want a tight tolerance, right? Because you don't, you don't want it moving around, <laughs> so it's tight. Sometimes you might just have to uh, tap it with a screwdriver just to uh, get it started and going. Down. There we go, now it's coming up. Yep, it's just coming yep. right on the edge of the plastic there. There's a little burr there. Make it hard to get the wrench and grab and pull it through. There, here we go. Through. But again, you want it to be that nice tight tolerance, yep. otherwise it'll move around. Yeah, and you won't and then you lose the ability to make the adjustments. Exactly. Like so there you're putting your washer on, the last washer and the nut. And this is where I like to uh, just use a little bit of basically anything to lube it up. This here is just a de-electric grease. Um, you would use anything, uh, water. Even a bit of oil, right? Oil, I, I typically don't do that if I'm working inside the boat, yeah. but uh, just water, even throw it in your mouth and the saliva will. Uh, all you're doing is lubricating that stainless steel for when you're uh, tightening up because stainless steel will actually uh, thread gall, which means that the threads basically weld themselves together. So um, it's uh, not good when that happens. Let's put this one in all the way. Tighten her down. And then you have to go tight because you're going to adjust it afterwards. So that's basically it there. And the only other part is the grommet. So this is a two-piece grommet. You basically open it up, put it around the cable, and then insert it into the actual hole in the, uh, there's a slotted hole there that you can insert it into. Push it in, and that's basically it. Last part is just your speed wheel. So this basically goes back down over top of that, and then, screwdriver so this here then turns that mount into a fully adjustable basically bulletproof p66 mount or the tm165 they're the exact same bracket for both 
Um, everything about it, the only difference is possibly the speed sensor at the front. And there you go. Yeah, that's it. Now, it, like as Brian said, fully, fully adjustable where I can pivot this on the back of the boat. Yeah. I know if you've got some crazy transom angles, you can do that. Yeah, it's um, no shims, no nothing, nothing. And basically as strong as can be. You're not going to hurt yeah. anything. It's all fastened together. Definitely, because you know, as you mentioned, I've also heard stories, never had it happen to myself yet, but with a P66 where um, it comes unclipped, you hit something, and next thing you know, your mount effect. Well, that's a problem up. with all the, they're all plastic holding exactly. the floor. Even the hinge mechanism in the factory mount is all, there's nothing mechanical holding it together that's made out of anything but uh, plastic, so. Definitely, and yes. you know, my attitude is, um, you want your transducer to be working all the time. If you suddenly hit something on the water and, and it breaks, you're out of action. Exactly. If you're someone like you know me, my boat's my boat's a big boat. You know, it's a it's a 27 TR. You know, 30 odd foot long. Um, you know, getting it on a trailer or having to get the marina to lift it out on a travel lift just to change a transducer that becomes very very expensive. Exactly. Whereas, you know, something like this, I don't have to worry about that now because you know, worst case scenario, if I do hit something and it just slides up. You know, I can jump in the water, put it back into position, I'm good to go. So that's uh, that's it, ready to go. Yeah, so it's all ready, and uh, that is the RTA 1400 on the website under the Airmar mounts uh, for the P66 and 165, and that's at uh, the website, ridetechmarine.ca or .com. All depends, yeah. Canadian or American, two different websites, or Canadian and then the international one that uh, basically um, the two websites and you're good to go. It's all on there and there's links to the video and all that stuff of course on the website also. Yep. So and I will put uh, links to the the two websites in the description of this video to make it easy to find. Fantastic. Well. Perfect. Awesome. So that's it everybody. Uh, check it out. If you've got a P66 or a TM165, this is the mount for you. It, you know, it's probably the way that this should have come from factory. Of course. Ryan's about making it better. Unfortunately, all the uh, there's three air marks that I make mounts for and unfortunately they're all plastic and they're amazing transducers. They make awesome transducers. The detail, everything about them are just A1. It's just uh, to be able to get the fine tuning and whatnot, you have to uh, jump up and spend a bit of money and get a bulletproof mount that uh, allows you to do everything there. So. Definitely, and the other thing I should mention before I forget, on the back of this mount, you'll see the slots. The slots here are far bigger than the factory mounts yeah, as they, well. So you get a lot more yep. adjustment. We should have mentioned yep. that earlier, but that's yep. another big advantage. And that is the airmark pattern on the back. So it all yep. just bolts right on as is, and you can remove it. And if you put this on and decide, hey, I want one of the ride tech mounts, you can just take it off and put it back on. It's yep. all the exact same. And you get the holes are in the same, the hull, if you're going right into fiberglass or aluminum. Yep. You don't have to re-drill, but you, you get more adjustability. 100%. So that's the big benefit. Yep. Well, folks, hope you find this video valuable. Um, if you do, uh, you know, click that like button. If you've got questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, either myself or Ryan would be happy to uh, answer them for you. Awesome. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.